Hey guys, Mark Farashi, ProTech Dog Training and Duke. Come on, Duke. Just setting up with Duke here. He just got out. He's all excited after coming out of the truck. Good dog. So we're going to try to get a flow going. And remember what I say, when you work a dog, you always want to kind of have your head right away involved with what goals do you have? What do you need to work on? Well, with Duke, he's a hound dog, so his nose wants to go to the ground. So first thing I've got to do is try to get him not doing that. So every time he does the negative, I pop, pop and pick his head up. And right away, there's a positive on the other side of it, right? Because training, a lot of it is nothing more than black and white. Black is the, the area where he goes to the ground. And right away, I would tap him up. And then right away, it would be positive up here, right? Nope. Because dogs live in the moment, and everything's about timing. We hear about it all the time. So right when he sticks his nose to the ground, I'm going to have a tap up. Right when he puts his nose up, there it is, okay? Every time he reaches up for that positive, after a while, we have a behavior. And in his case, I really don't care about a focused heel because he's not going to give it to me. He's not going to give me this, I'm, I'm, I'm loving you and his head's up. The breed's just not there. His type, breed type, his demeanor and everything else is not going to give me that. But if I can keep him from tip, dipping his nose to the ground, that's good enough on a heel, right? And it's just on the heel that I want it. Does that mean that I don't want a dog to go to nose to the ground? Hey, if I wanted to teach him to track, but I might put in cues. I might use a harness. I might do other things to motivate that behavior in that context. Everything's very contextual with the dog. So... We can use that to our benefit by using tools like harnesses and certain collars we put on him when he's going to work. You see Oscar Moore always accenting that where he'll put a collar on the dog. I'm always using Oscar as a good example because he, he does a great job with conveying some of his spots, his stuff within sport. And there's enough of you that watch his videos because he does a lot better as digital magic than I do. But it's all good. I don't have a crew to follow me around. Nope. So um, back to the contextual aspects of a dog. If I have my leash sitting on the wall, a lot of times people have their leash on, on a peg on the wall. They'll go take out their dog on a daily walk. Every time they do it, they might do it at a certain time of the day that they do their walks around 5 o'clock, whatever time it is. Dogs are very aware of time. They don't know that it's 3 o'clock, but they know that in a general sense, this is the time that I wake up. My dogs, I have a time clock about 7 o'clock that I wake up. I try to get them to hold, but a lot of times they're wanting to get up at 6, 6.30. So I force them to stay in their box and stay there until the 7 o'clock hour. I don't want to wake up the neighbors. All the dogs will go crazy. Duke, down. Good. So I kind of have a time clock. They get used to that. And then pattern and routine. You hear me talking about it all the time, how important that is to your training regimen. Duke, sit. Yes. Duke, down. Good. Now I've got my goal today with Duke is to get him to not put his head down to the ground. That's on the healing pattern. And then also to start teaching him a better down stay. Good. So the dog goes between the legs on the downstays. Good. And we start building up on a behavior. The food's on the ground, right? So then I start clocking him. If I was to go all the way around Duke, he'd probably break in the very beginning. I've already got him kind of primed for this. Let's see if he does it. Good. Time level. So he's allowing me to clock him. He's not breaking in between that. I come back and right away, good. So I build up on the time level of good. Good. Notice the time level is about 30 seconds. Good, maybe even less. Stay. Good, and accenting what I want him to do. I'll get to the point where I'll be out in front and I'll actually put, nope, good boy, Duke doesn't know how to handle it yet. But if I do it with Joker or with any other dog, I can pull on the end of that because I've accented the fact he's supposed to stay there within that context of the exercise. Again, contextual, right? Good. So if I had my, my leash on the wall and I go over to that, to that peg to go take the dog out for a walk, pretty soon he's going to go be bonkers around that time period seeing me go for the leash. That's contextual. Dogs are very contextual animals. And a lot of people don't understand that. And they end up with problems with a dog because the dog will get into a behavior and they'll let it happen. They'll let it occur. And pretty soon that spirals and gets more and more. Good. When I had uh, Draco, nope, the German Shepherd with me, his problem was, and still is, we need to work on this at home, is uh, going off and being boundary territorial aggression because his, his owners have a huge set of, of windows that 
when they go to the yard to come visit, that's what they're walking into. So you have people ding dong, all of a sudden the dog hears that ding dong, and here comes a person right towards that window. And the dog was allowed to get aggressive at that window because he didn't have any control yet. They didn't have any obedience to work in. Now we have all these things built into the tool bag that we can now start working on changing that dog's behavior in that context, right? And we'll change that to where the dog is now expected, good, to go to his bed, to go to his coranda bed, which you can move anywhere because now the dog has been grounded to that and we'll start teaching the dog not to get reactive when people show up. But all the things that add up to that routine and that pattern are the dog, ding dong, oh, here comes somebody, excitement, and then territorial aggression because he's got these windows, almost like a fence line, to be able to go crazy on, right? And so that was allowed, that behavior was allowed to spiral and get out of control, and it doesn't get better, it gets worse and worse. So now we have obedience put in, and we can start changing behaviors with the stuff that we have to work with, the tools that we have in our tool bag. No. Now notice I'm not pulling on the pinch here, guys. I've got another collar on. No, down, stay. If I was to grab that pinch and try to yank him around, that would be constant pain, and we don't want that. Good, so when I have to take the dog back to where he started, pull him around to in a circle, I usually want some kind of collar on him, a flat collar, something I can grab. I'm not gonna put the pressure on this because it's too much for the dog to handle a constant pain. Remember, the pinch is used as a tap, tap, tap. 90% of the time. We very seldom do we put constant pressure on that pinch. There are some things that we can use it in that way, but most for the most part, we do not. Down. Nope, most of the time, it's just a little tap, right? Good. And here's a, a, the sound of the uh, trash truck is what made him break. And we have a lot more work to get him to understand that downstay means downstay, to ground him. We're gonna be working on that this week. Good, good, oh, good boy, good time level, right? And now it's time to break. It's that short and sweet on patterns. Everything's built on pieces of the puzzle and patterns. Duke, good boy, good, Duke. Get it, get it, get it, go get it, go get it, go get it, go good boy. Good boy, Duke, good boy, yay, <laughs> good boy, good, yeah, good boy, get it, get it, get it, get it. Good boy, Duke, he loves this ball game, boy. Good boy, Duke. Come on. <laughs> Come on, Duke. Good boy. All right, Duke. Out. Nope. Nope. Now, I was going to step on that. He's on the pinch right now. I don't want to create that. Good boy. Good. I want to put him on a flat, which would be this one. And I usually have another one I can tighten up. His owner's got this dang thing on him. It's so loose, it's useless. It'll slip right off his head. Good. Remember, tools are designed to be functional and to put a tool to a use. And in this case, they had nothing with this dog. Good boy, good. Sit. Hey, you sit. Nope. Yes, good boy, good. Um, I got another ball somewhere. Where the heck did it go? Good boy, Duke. Good boy, nope. Good boy, Duke. I got two. <laughs> Duke says, I like playing this ball game. I do. Oh, there it is. I got it. Duke. Good boy, yes. Good boy, good. There he goes. Starting to learn that I'm the second ball. There's an, always another ball. Duke. Good boy, Duke, good. Duke out. Yes. Good boy, now he's getting it. He was so used to playing with himself, he'd keep his paw on it, he'd bat the ball. Good boy, now I'm trying to get him to understand there's a second ball. Duke. Good boy, good, yeah. Good boy, out. Yes, good boy, now he's dropping it at least. His attention's still on the ball, but that's all right. Baby steps and we'll get there. We'll build these behaviors, it just takes time. Good boy, come on Duke, good boy. Yeah, you're such a happy dog. All right, Duke, Duke. Good boy, good. Yeah, good boy, good, yay. He's already starting to get bored and he's gonna float and his nose is gonna take over. Why? He's a hound dog, noses go to the ground. That's another whole part of his world. A spectrum that we don't have any concept with, but the drives are there. You have to understand them and have to redirect those drives into something else, in what we want, right? How do we put these stuff to work for us? Yeah, yeah, good boy, yeah, good boy. All right, I'm gonna make a special field trip tomorrow. I won't talk about it until I'm doing a road trip and I'll start discussing it and talking at one of my yak sessions as I take the drive to go visit a very special person tomorrow.
that I'm gonna really enjoy with because this young lady, this lady <laughs> has a world of bona fides behind her, a lot of expertise and we'll be talking about her tomorrow. I'm gonna take a special trip to go meet her and go see her dogs and go introduce her to Red. I'm trying to work hard to get Red a, a new home and put him to work. Nope. Good boy, good. <laughs> All right, guys, Mark Farashi, Protect Dog Training. Out playing with Duke, what you guys think is play, is a lot more about trying to get harness the dog's drives, create drives, create behaviors in the animal that I, we can put to work for us. Good boy, Duke. You're going to go home in a couple weeks. Your, your parents miss you. They love you. They've got a lot to learn. It's all about the education and the end of the owner because if I don't get the owner off the couch, don't educate them. Remember what I'm always telling you. You're pissing your money away, right? Good boy, Duke. Do us a high. All right, Mark Farashi, Protect Dog Training, signing off. Have a good day, guys.